Welcome back, family. You know what I need y'all guys to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me, guys. My channel is growing. Despite not small beginnings. You understand? Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Comment, family. I'm trying to get into the YouTube algorithm. YouTube tripping sometimes, but I'm going to keep peddling it anyway. Support my channel by going to the Cash App, guys, and donating there. It's dollar sign drama 1980. I do appreciate you in advance. You also can support my channel by clicking on the super thanks located under the video, guys. Donating there as well. And like how I tell each and every one of y'all, I do appreciate you. Ten folds over, hands down. I'm proud that you're rocking with me. Well, 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 guys, I'm back one more time. You know my motto. I don't make believe, I make believers. I'm your gracious host, Helen from Columbia, South Carolina. I hope you're having a good day today. But if that's not the case, ask yourself why, family. Because remember, happiness is an inside job. In other words, it's your responsibility. And it will always be an internal affair. Well, guys, we back today again. Guys, these adoption agencies and these people adopting black kids, you have to keep an eye on these people. And this is why I'm going to call your attention to the screen, guys. Listen up. Now, this might be triggering for some, okay? But I want you to watch this, okay? Investigators believe they targeted these children specifically from a shelter because they were black, forcing them to work as slaves. Being charged with a felony, child neglect, creating risk of injury. The two children were being locked in a barn at this home on Cheyenne Lane in Sissonville. They actually they weren't able to locate any guardians or parental figures or anybody around the, the residence or the barn and started having a conversation with two children that were inside the barn. Deputies eventually forced their way into the barn where they said they found a 16-year-old girl and 14-year-old boy inside a 20 by 14 foot room. Investigators say the teens had no way to get out of the shed with no running water, no bathroom. The girl told deputies their parents had brought them food around 6 o'clock that morning but said her and her brother weren't allowed in the house and were locked in the barn for long periods every day. Eyewitness News spoke to neighbors who were afraid to go on camera but claim multiple families called police about the children's safety several times, and they are thankful they are now safe. Well, I mean, it's a pretty bad case. I mean, it's, it's you know, in any type of situation like this, it's not really comparable, a horrific condition. Like, it's just not how you want or how you would even expect children to be raised or being taken care of. Lance and White Feather eventually showed up at the home. They're now charged with child neglect, creating substantial risk of injury. The mother admitted the children were left in the shed, but reportedly told deputies they, quote, liked it. They're trying to, you know, get the children back in better living conditions, better placement, and the detectives will continue to investigate and build this case. And deputies said a third child who was about five or six years old was found alone in the main home. And the child was found crying and close to the railing of an approximately 15-foot drop from a loft. The bond was initially set at $200,000 cash, and they were both able to post it. Prosecutors have said in a new complaint for forfeiture, the couple sold a $725,000 80 acre ranch in Washington state and sold their Sissonville home to post bond. And they believe both of these properties were paid for through trafficking. That will be decided in a separate court matter. But because of this, prosecutors say they found discrepancies in the financial affidavit Lance filled out for a court appointed attorney, leading to a new charge on his indictment. Now, that's a lot to unpack, but I'm going to do it my way, okay? As you can tell, they wasn't poor people. There wasn't these toothless hair bellies. I've been telling y'all this. These people sick. These people practice white supremacy. We've been trying to tell y'all this in this here parallels. The Hart family. Do anybody remember that case? But I'm going to talk about that case a little further down, okay? They had these children locked in a barn. A 20 by 14. Nothing to eat. No running water. No toilets, no bathrooms, no anything for long periods of time. Had them working and doing little things. Treat them just like slaves. Y'all, these adoption agencies are nothing but human trafficking. Bullets. These people know what goes on. 
with these black children, but they turn a blind eye. Listen at me. Listen. They turn a blind eye. This is not the first time. This is not the first case that I've seen. I've seen hundreds and thousands of cases like this. But it goes under the radar undetected. But I'm bringing it to the light. That's my job to bring it to the light. Because most people will look at a family like that. Oh, they just adopted some black kids. You better ask the DeBarge family. Do anybody remember the DeBarge family? That father, their own father was molesting them and doing all type of egregious things to them. And the mother sought them. You understand? To his own kids. He was a white man with a black woman had kids. The DeBarge family was a singing family. It was a famous family. And that man was abusing those kids the whole time. According to the news clip that you just seen, family, don't let this be lost on you. The neighbors and several people called the police several times. Nothing happened. If you really pay attention to whenever white people, white supremacists, not white people, Distinguish the difference. These white supremacists will adopt black children just to torture them, just to treat them bad, just to mistreat them and, and misuse them and abuse them. That's their mindset. Don't you understand that? And a lot of them always come out sexually confused. Look at Madonna, child. Huh? Look at Charlize Theron children. Huh? You want to continue? And yeah, we can keep going now. They come out sexually confused. They always end up in a dress. A boy always end up in a dress or something. Probably 90% of the time. It's no benevolent wonderland. No, that's not how things operate. If you go read the slave narratives, the ones that ran away the most was the ones that was in the house. It wasn't the one out there in the field. It was the house Negroes, not the field Negroes. These people adopt these children just to torture. This is utterly ridiculous, guys. And you won't see this plastic across the news no way with Huh? Where is the hate crime bill? Huh? Where is the hate crime bill? And not only the bill, but enforce it. Not talk about it. Not just have it sitting on the books, collecting dust. I'm talking about the hate crime bill enforced. These people need to go to prison for at least 25 years, 25 or 30 years, if not life. They sold their house in Washington State to Post Bell and their house in West Virginia. The people had money. So what in their mind would make them want to go just torture children, innocent children. Somebody that can't fend for themselves, basically helpless, at your mercy. That's what they lack. They lack soft targets. See, I'm tying everything in together, guys. They lack soft targets. And they understand that nobody will help them children because they black. They're going to be hard pressed to get caught. And you see how many times it took for them to call the police in order for them to get caught up. And guys, let's keep our eye on this case because they still might not get nothing. Now, I said earlier, this parallels the heart children. There was two lesbians that adopted uh, six kids. Five of them was black and one of them was like a Hispanic child. These children was being starved, guys. The children would leave the house, escape the house and go to the neighbor's house and beg for food. They was at school. The little girl told the teacher, she's abusing me. A teacher lift up her shirt of one of the little girls. And there were so many whips and bruises all over the girl. They locked the woman up for like 90 days or something like that. And then they got the children right back. It was getting so bad that people was calling the police on them, calling the police. Nothing wasn't happening. And finally, one time, they called and Child Protective Services came out again. And they knew then the jig was up. 
these women proceeded to get all of their kids in the car and leave and drove them off of a cliff a murder suicide do anybody remember that they were starving these kids the kids was begging for food the kids was telling people help me because they hurting us they abusing us they taking food from us and people you know some people try to call but it took a long time guys the crazy thing about the heart case the women was charged with child abuse before adopting the five kids this is animalistic this is demonic people want to hurt innocent children it's better to tie a milestone around your neck and then for you to mess with one of my little ones a child is innocent a child don't know no better and you torture them and hurting them and abusing them and doing all type of things to them I hope you die a horrible death I said it yes messing with kids I hope you die a horrible death cause it don't make sense guys I know that was heavy but sometimes you have to just come straight down the middle with, with no chase some people don't deserve to live messing with kids innocent children see I'm not one of these people they'll just sit back oh they just hurt my kid and I don't know what to do I know what to do team I know exactly what to do mess with mine and see what happens and that's all that I'm gonna say guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button come on back to see me guys and until next time peace and remember there is more